Hello everyone. Today I will be doing some essay questions from paper two. Um, this is the CAIE examination and I will be starting with October, November 2018. I don't want to make this video too long, so I will be doing one question in this video. So let's just make this part one. And I will be attempting question number two from section B. So this is what section B looks like. Uh, they give you three options out of which you have to choose one and it will be split with an eight mark and a 12 marker. So it's 20 marks in total. Um, I'm going to be doing question number two in this video. Explain the significance of cross elasticity of demand values that are negative, positive and zero. I've basically highlighted everything, but uh, the question is about XED and the values and what they mean. So let's start with this question. So let's talk about the intro first. Uh, in the intro, the first thing you should do is define the key terms. So what are the key terms here? Um, cross elasticity of demand. So XED is equal to um, the percentage change in the quantity demanded in response to a change in response to a change in the price of another product okay another related product really you could also give the formula so the formula is mm, XED is equal to percentage change in quantity demanded of one product upon the percentage change in price of another. Now, one thing that I always tell my students is please don't use these short forms in an exam. I'm just doing it to speed things up. But at least for the first time, if you're using things like percentage, write the full form at least once and then you can write percentage in brackets or like for example quantity demanded you've written QD at least write quantity demanded in its full form once and then you can use it for the rest of your essay and then to tie up the end of my intro I will say something like XED can have different values that are either positive negative or zero Right. Obviously, that's kind of like repeating uh, what the question is asking you, but it also sets up the rest of your essay. Um, so that's what I usually like to do. So now in the main paragraph, let's talk about each set of values separately. First, let's talk about positive values. So if there's a percentage, um, a percentage change in price of B, that's positive. And this results in a percentage change in the quantity demanded of A to also be positive, then you'll get a value that is positive. Or alternatively, if we have a percentage change in price of B that's negative, then we'd have a percentage change in quantity demanded of A that is also negative because negative and negative gives you positive. So what kind of product is this where if the price of the other product has gone up the demand for your product will increase so just think about it logically if the price of some other product has gone up and it causes the demand for your product to go up that means that these two products are probably substitutes not probably they are substitutes similarly if there is a decline in the price of uh, product B and this causes the, or the demand for your product to fall again this would indicate that this pro these two products are substitutes so that's exactly what I'll say here that these two products are substitutes okay so you have to explain all of this in words that the price of one product falling causes the demand for the other product to rise you could show this on a diagram and you could also give an example for what substitutes are. So substitutes are, first of all, uh, two, two alternative products, uh, two products that are alternatives to each other, two products that are alternatives 
okay and you could also give an example for example um private transport versus uh public transport because you can't take both at the same time right so these two things are probably substitutes to each other then i'm going to move on to negative values this time the percentage change in uh, price of b if positive would cause the percentage change in um, quantity demanded of a to fall be negative and that is why you get a negative value alternatively if the percentage change in price of b is negative then this would cause the percentage change in quantity demanded of a to go up again giving us a negative sign thinking about it logically again if the percentage change in price of one product goes up and it causes the demand for the other product to fall you could su this would suggest that these two products are complements because think about it if another product's price going up causes the demand for your product to fall they must be related or jointly demanded and that's why this is true as well so let's just write here that these two products are you guessed it complements can we give an example of complementary products uh what about tea and sugar that's a popular one especially in pakistan um we could also have a uh, car and petrol that's a good complement a uh, complementary pair basically you'll need to explain all of this in words how complementary products have an inverse relationship and how the uh, price of one thing going up will lead to the demand of the other thing falling or if the price of one thing falls the demand of product a will rise and then to make your point stronger you could give an example of each let's talk about uh, zero because they've asked for that this is simply when there's a change in price um of b it leads to no change or zero change in a so that means there's no correlation at all the two products are not related okay are not related for example uh the change in prices of philips televisions will have no impact whatsoever on cucumbers they're not related at all um you could get it give an example like that but you don't need to obviously for my conclusion uh there's a few ways to go about this in this particular uh, essay what i will do is i'll just mention how the size of the value um indicates the strength of the relationship so size of the value equals strength of the relationship meaning uh the higher the value the higher the size of the value negative or positive uh the higher the strength of the relationship bigger the value bigger the sorry i should say stronger the relationship sorry guys i know my handwriting is not the best i'm working on it i hope you can understand what i'm writing let's look at part b part b is a discuss question which usually means there's two sides to the arguments so we say discuss the extent to which the concepts of ped income elasticity or demand and pes would be useful or helpful to an organization responsible for the growth of tourism to a holiday resort what i want you guys to know is says it discuss the extent so when it says extent um it's really asking you how useful it is and what are the limitations as well so you need a little bit of both right let's talk about the intro first um always define everything so define um ped yed and pes 
So PED is price elastic demand. It's the measure uh, of responsiveness of quantity demanded to a change in price. This is a measure of responsiveness of demand to a change in income. And this is a measure of responsiveness of supply to a change in price. And then I'll make some sort of general statement about how each of these measures are both useful. Oops, that's one extra L, useful, but also have their limitations. Okay, so now I've set up my essay. So the way I will personally attempt this is I would talk about each of these measures separately. So first let's talk about PED, and then I'm gonna talk about YED, and then I'll talk about PES. And then um, let's see, say for PED, it's um, talking about the effect of price. So in terms of a holiday resort, they would know the impact of a change in price, okay, and how this will affect demand. So for example, if they were to raise their um, room prices, if room prices went up, what would happen to the quantity demanded? Would the total revenue go up or would the total revenue fall? And this would depend on elasticity, whether it's elastic or if it's um, inelastic in demand, right? So the main point for PED is how a change in price would impact the quantity demanded. And this, to uh, this effect on total revenue because that's what they care about at the end of the day, right? Let's move on to YED. YED measures how uh, income will impact uh, the quantity demanded. So how a change in income will affect the quantity demanded, okay? So for example, if incomes are going up, uh, what would happen to the quantity, quantity demanded? Well, obviously, um, if you think about it, tourism should be something where Tourism is a normal product, right? Uh, where if the income goes up, you would expect the quantity demanded to rise. So if income goes up, you would expect the quantity demanded to also rise. Uh, you could mention that a normal good is when the values are positive. So the main point is you want to make a link between incomes and quantity demanded. And because tourism is considered a normal product, you would expect the demand for uh, tourism to go up and by extension, the demand for the holiday resort and rooms to also rise. So a uh, holiday resort uh, demand would rise. Lastly, let's talk about PES, which is the, uh, how a change in price affects supply this time. So change in price and how it affects supply. Now, what are we talking about? What supply of what? We're talking about a holiday resort. So we're probably thinking about in terms of um, if there's an increase in price, is the holiday resort able to respond um, with increasing the number of rooms available? So if prices go up, can they give more rooms? Can they rent out more rooms? The thing is, um, this is probably going to be inelastic in supply, is it not? Because uh, it's not that easy to expand the number of rooms you have at a certain period of time. Obviously, as time goes on, your PES would increase because you can, you can expand over time. But in the short run, you're likely to be inelastic to a change in price. Lastly, let's finish off this um, essay by evaluating and concluding our essay. Um, so in our evaluation, let's talk about the limitations, okay? Um, the limitations mainly lie in um, the fact that income elasticity of demand, YED, and income is not really in the hand of producers. So producers control of uh, income is low, right? So if there's a recession in the economy, um, the producer, or in this case, the hotel, can't do too much about this. So it's not really in their control. 
uh, when we talk about PES, again, this talks about how price affects supply. Um, and this can be changed in the long run. So is it really a useful measure to have in the short run? Not even. Probably not. I may also make a comment about PED and I'll say price is one thing that is in the control um, of the resort. Control of resort would probably be high here. You could even mention how they could make uh, give certain offers. So um, they could give discounts like early bird discounts. They could have um, special fares. So these are some of the things that they can do in order to um, take advantage of this PED knowledge. So I will conclude by saying that these uh, measures are useful, but to a certain degree, right? Because there are certain limitations, but to a certain degree. So now you have uh, both the limitations and a concluding statement. So that's it for this video. I hope it's helpful and look out for my next one. Thank you.